Introducing the Linvitec Shoulder Restoration System, an innovative solution for repair of rotator cuff tendon tears. Providing a total solution for rotator cuff repair, the Linvitec SRS gives surgeons the necessary tools to perform single row, double row, or transosseous repairs in an intuitive, comprehensive package. The Linvitec SRS focuses on tear-specific techniques, which allow confident, intraoperative decision-making and management of even the most demanding tear patterns. Combining advanced technologies with expert techniques, the transosseous equivalent rotator cuff repair, utilizing the Linvitec SRS, results in a secure rotator cuff repair that restores the anatomic footprint for enhanced tendon-to-bone contact while maximizing fixation strength. Before the arthroscopic rotator cuff repair can begin, all other glenohumeral pathology should be assessed and repaired as necessary. In addition, subacromial decompression, either with or without a chromioclavicular joint excision, should be completed and the cuff carefully debrided back to viable tissue. Lastly, the tuberosity should be prepared by denuding it of all extraneous soft tissue and the margins of the rotator cuff tear should be identified. The rotator cuff tear pattern should be classified by assessing its mediolateral and anteroposterior mobility. This procedure will be viewed through the posterior portal while working through the lateral portal. The lateral working portal will be maintained with an 8 mm dry dock cannula and the smaller anchor portals will be planned using a spinal needle before the 2 mm incisions are made to facilitate the insertion of the medial row of anchors. If the tear is classified as simple and thus suitable for a transosseous equivalent repair, the insertion site for the two medial row anchors must be determined with the spinal needle. To prepare for the insertion of the anterior most anchor, the CrossFit Universal Punch is inserted at the dead man's angle, or 45 degrees, to the bone surface, approximately 2 millimeters from the articular margin near the anterior extent of the tear. The CrossFit Universal Punch is carefully advanced to the horizontal laser line using either hand pressure or gentle taps with a mallet. Once a pilot hole has been created, the CrossFit suture anchor is inserted down to the horizontal laser line, being careful to note the position of the eyelet as indicated by the vertical laser lines on the driver's shaft. A second pilot hole is created by the CrossFit Universal Punch near the posterior edge of the tear and close to the articular margin. The second CrossFit suture anchor is then inserted in the pilot hole. Using the match suture colors from each CrossFit suture anchor, the free ends are passed through the torn edge of the rotator cuff to create a horizontal mattress stitch. A horizontal mattress is performed with paired sutures from both the anterior and posterior suture anchors. A 10 to 15 millimeter bite is preferable to ensure a broad expanse of tendon for footprint compression by crossing sutures later on in the repair. The paired sutures from each horizontal mattress are tied but not cut. The remaining suture ends are preserved by retrieving each pair back out of its respective anchor portal. At this point, the second suture of each anchor may be removed as it will not be used for the final construct. Before inserting the lateral pop-lock suture anchors, the anterior suture from each cross-fit suture anchor must be retrieved out of the lateral working cannula. For example, the anterior most suture of the anterior cross-fit suture anchor is coupled with the anterior most suture from the posterior cross-fit suture anchor. The pair of sutures is then loaded through the pop-lock anchor using the suture loading tab. Once the sutures are loaded into the pop lock, a needle driver can be placed on the sutures to effectively allow the loaded anchor to be hung from the cannula, thereby freeing both of the surgeon's hands for the remaining steps. The shoulder is then externally rotated to facilitate placement of the anterior most lateral row anchor. External rotation brings the ideal point for insertion of a 3.5 millimeter pop lock punch directly in line with the lateral working cannula. The pop lock punch is inserted down to the horizontal laser line, creating the anterior most pilot hole for the lateral row of anchors.
being careful to mimic the insertion angle of the punch, advance the pop lock anchor into the same hole. When advancing the anchor, hold the handle underneath the black deployment trigger. This is critical to prevent premature deployment. Hand pressure or gentle taps with a mallet can be used to advance the anchor to the horizontal laser line. Do not insert the anchor beyond the laser line as depth of insertion is critical to the functioning of this anchor. If the anchor is advanced too far, it should be backed out to the laser line before proceeding. Prior to anchor deployment, the sutures are individually tensioned while maintaining a counterforce on the anchor in the hole. Once satisfied with their tension, the pop lock is deployed by releasing the safety and applying firm and constant pressure on the deployment trigger until the characteristic and audible pop is heard. At that point, the insertion handle can simply be removed. The suture tails are then cut using the katana suture cutter. After the suture tails are cut and removed, the second pair of sutures is retrieved through the lateral portal and loaded into the 3.5 millimeter pop lock. The arm is then internally rotated to optimize the insertion of the posterior pop lock suture anchor. As with the previous pop lock suture anchor, the 3.5 millimeter pop lock punch creates the posterior pilot hole and the anchor is then inserted to the horizontal laser line once again. Once each suture is satisfactorily tensioned and the safety is released, the pop lock suture anchor is deployed. Finally, with the insertion handle removed, the katana suture cutter clips the remaining suture tails, completing the rotator cuff repair. Once completed, view the entire repair from the posterior portal as well as the lateral working portal. It is also recommended that the repair be visualized from inside the joint to confirm that the medial row securely compresses the repaired tendon to the bone and that there hasn't been any inadvertent intraarticular placement of the anchors, as the peak anchors cannot be visualized on x-ray. The wounds are then closed and the patient is placed in a shoulder immobilizer complete with a small abduction pillow to allow the axilla to breathe in an effort to prevent an irritating fungal infection. Individualize the postoperative protocol according to patient factors and surgeon preferences.